I cannot express how awkward I feel right now because anytime I get into a video that talks about myself I just feel extremely awkward because I feel like I'm not very good at talking about myself and I feel like I need to make jokes every five minutes well not every five minutes every five seconds to make myself feel less awkward but it just makes me even more <laughs> awkward so um yeah Welcome back to Goldilocks Original. I am Rose, as you should know by now. Oh, if you don't, hello, I am Rose and welcome back. Uh, today's video is basically my pre-camp story. I'll be talking about um, um, the application process. I'll, well, firstly, I'm going to be talking about why I decided to do Camp America. Then I'm going to talk about the application process and a bit about the visa and the flight so um, buckle up this is, might be a bit of a longer video than I anticipated because it's me and I ramble so um, take a seat get some popcorn and I'll just dive right into it so we're going to go into the story of why I decided to do Camp America and um, for that to take um, for, for that to happen we have to go back in time back to 2016-2017 so um, back in 2016 I was actually seeing someone and he did Camp America quite often though I think he did it through another company than I did um, and, um, and he was like oh would you be open to doing Camp America and I was like oh well it sounds interesting and, but I didn't do it that summer because I didn't sign up for it in time and also um, I just wasn't in the fittest state and I you know, it was something on my mind, but I didn't, I wasn't fully into it by that point. And then by that, and then um, in mid-2017, I broke up with this boy, um, this person that I was seeing. And um, so towards, like, the end of 2017, um, I decided to look into it, and I actually signed up to Camp Leaders to begin with. Um, and I started applying with them and I got through the interview process and I even got my um, medical form signed because I needed to have a medical form because I was on medication. Um, so yeah, um, I started that and um, I started the process but my mental health between 2017, well, wait no, no this wasn't 2017, this was um, 2016. So basically at the beginning of 2016 I was with this guy and then, you know, we broke off in mid-2016. Then towards the end of 2016-2017, I mean, I started looking into doing Camp America. Um, not because of him, yeah, not because of him, <laughs> but because I kind of just wanted to do something adventurous and I always wanted to go to America, but in the end I decided not to do it. Um, because my mental health was really bad towards the end of 2016 to 2017. Um, so I decided not to go through, even though I'd gotten through like the first stages of it, I decided not to do it because it just, I didn't think it was a good choice for me, unfortunately. Um, and it had always been at the back of my mind to do it. Like, I was, I, I actually think I actually said to someone in 2017 when I decided not to do it, then I was like, I might do it next year. Um, I, um, but it just never happened because, um, by the time 2018 came around, I decided to do a master's degree and I was so tight with my finances because, um, 2018 we were doing that graduation film and I had to put a lot of my money into that. So it just didn't really, it couldn't, it just, it didn't work out either way. So by that point I had sort of given up doing Camp America, if that makes sense, uh, or Camp Leaders, as it was. Um, so um, I'm just going to forward a little bit in time to 2020. So by the time 2020 came about, I had just finished doing my master's degree um, and I just graduated doing it um, back in 2019 of November. And um, I, I had always said to people, hey, in 
2020 I'm going to do some travelling, I want to see the world, um, 2020 is for travelling because I was really debating going back into um, education to do an MFA degree and then a PhD but then I was just like well I haven't really seen the world so and I, that's something that I've always wanted to do so I was like 2020 is travelling yeah and <laughs> Well, I got as far as Amsterdam, <laughs> um, and Amsterdam was absolutely amazing. I'm so wanting to go back there as well. The place was so friendly, everyone was just so lovely, uh, and the museums I went to were so amazing. I, I look forward to going back there again at some point, but that was in February of 2020, and then obviously we know what happened in 2020. Um, everything was just shut down, so my travelling plans were just cut off short. And that fast forwards us to 2021. So um, I keep seeing people travelling on my Instagram and Facebook and I'm just like, okay, I, this is, everything's sort of trying, this winding down so maybe I can start travelling again. And, um, and with my new job as a home care assistant, um, I've become quite close to death, um, unfortunately unfortunately well it's it, it comes with the job unfortunately and I have witnessed death and not just even in my job um, there's also been something that's happened in my personal life that has made me witnessed a near death and um, it has really shook me to the core and it has sort of opened my eyes a bit more and been like what am I doing like I'm saving up all this money but um, nothing's working and I'm just so depressed, I'm not doing what I set out to do and I'm not being able to see the world right now and the sun <laughs> is finally coming out today <laughs> um, um, but yeah um, I yeah when you when you're just that close to death all the time you sort of start to reevaluate your life and what you want and one of the things that I've always, where I've always wanted to go and travel through, I'm sorry, it's winking my eye. <laughs> um, one of the places that I've always wanted to travel through is America. And I then just thought of Camp America and I was like, well, I I wasn't 100% sold on it because one of the things I did, didn't want to do when I was traveling is work. <laughs> but um, I... I then started to look at things like a different perspective because one of the things that I was thinking about in regards to travelling or working abroad was maybe teaching abroad, like teaching English uh, abroad, um, but I was just not 100% sold on it because firstly, um, like I said, when I, when I travelled I didn't really want to work and then secondly, um, I didn't know if I was any good with kids. Um, I had started going to Beavers, um, like volunteering Beavers, and just like helping out with kids like that, but I was only getting an hour a week with them, and even then I couldn't always go because of work commitments and also just like personal life just got in the way. So I had no idea if I was any good with kids, so I didn't know if I could be a teacher working abroad, working with kids, teaching them English. Um, that's why I wasn't like, that's why, yeah, um, but I also knew practically I couldn't travel, I couldn't see the world, I couldn't work abroad or anything like that without working. <laughs> because um, even if I save all the money up in the world, it won't be enough to sustain me on these travels. And also I have been thinking of working with kids, even outside of just being a, well, a teacher abroad, I have been thinking of maybe taking, taking up a career, career path of being a youth worker and working with kids and helping kids who are in difficult situations, everything like that. And, you know, and coupled with my desire to travel, it kind of just like made sense, maybe I should like do Camp America, you know, what you know? And, um, yeah, and I started looking into it and I started, honestly, I'm starting my eye. Yeah, I started like looking into Camp America and I started applying and um, just, um, I wasn't, I still wasn't 100% sold on whether I was going to do it or not, but I started applying and I started, you know, um, putting my attention into the application 
and yeah it just started from there. But with the application process it took me about two or three months to get it all done um, because it was just like a lot to do and um, it wasn't even me that had to do a lot as well. Um, basically so I'll just go through the actual application process. Um, I've, I've written down the list of things that I had to do. So um, first things first I had to write down my skills like what skills could I offer to any camp and I put down like my creative writing, master's degree in like my film skills and my video editing and photography. Um, did I put down anything else? I put down arts and crafts but like I'm not like that well versed in arts and crafts, I'm just like, I'm the basic <laughs> arts and crafts person. Um, and then I, there was a section about me and I think that was more written by the person who interviewed me. Um, and it just goes into um, about your life and what you um, what you experience and why you're coming to camp and everything like that and why you want to work in a camp and um, then there's the education um, so I put down all my um, um, both of my degrees and then all my previous education as well like college and my school well just my college really um, and then um, there's like the work history so I put down my um, home care assistant job, my previous retails experience and everything like that and then um, there's the medical info and that's when I had to like fill out a medical form um, again for Camp America because Camp Leaders and Camp America are totally two different companies so I had to go through the process of getting my medical form uh, redone um, and that cost me 40 quid. It was going to be 30 quid but then when I found out it was Camp America it was like oh no it's 40 pounds I was like <laughs> that's a bit rude um so yeah um and then there was the references and i got one of my previous bosses to fill out a reference as well as my um one of my lecturers at my master's degree and um a beavers um and the head beaver scout leader um at my um, volunteering beaver scouts and then um i had like the contact details so my emergency contacts are my dad and my friend um she says as she flips over the notebook and then there was like the flight choice so there's like a f multiple uh, there's two choices of flights you can either book one on your own you can either book your own flights going um in and out or you can get camp america to do it i selected the choice of having camp america book my flights um because this is my first time and i had no idea what i was doing i had no idea what to uh, what the procedures were so I was just like you know what I'm gonna leave it over to them to do it um, which I was really grateful for and with my return flight as well I got a DIY flexi return which uh, I'm probably going to talk about a bit more about later and then I had to fill out my passport details and then my availability of when I can do camp and then an enhanced and then there's like an enhanced application option where you can add photos of yourself and like add of like a video. I did both um, and also put like photos of your um, degree certificates as well. And um, like I said briefly about the ta about uh, about me um, section of the application, um, there was an interview that I had to go to with Camp America and it's just basically like a simple nice interview like they ask you questions about your life and everything like that it was actually really personal at one point I did not expect to get that personal I thought they would just go ask me like oh so why like why you want to do Camp America which is what they asked but they also asked me about my childhood and my background and um it was very that was a very rough area for me and I was like oh dear <laughs> I did not I did not expect this going in um, so for anyone who wants to do Camp America um, be, and you don't have the best background experience just be aware they do ask you about your childhood they are really, really nice about it they don't they're not they don't purposely make you feel awkward but it's just it might feel awkward to you because you're just like oh, okay <laughs> I did not expect this to happen but um, yeah so they um, but it's a half an hour interview and they just, um, it's just their way of um, promoting you to other clients basically. So just, um, it's not too horrible, but just be aware they do ask you a lot of personal questions and they ask you about your morals and how you got your morals and I was like, um, I watch TV a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's how I got my morals. Um, but yeah, um, uh, so that was like the application process. And at, towards the end of it, like towards like the end of November and like December time, I was starting to feel doubtful that I was going to do it. Um, 
I wasn't like 100% sold on it still. Um, and to be honest with you, at this point I was still keeping it low key, like only like my friends knew. Um, my dad didn't know at this point as well. Um, like I had briefly mentioned it to him, but he didn't have the best response. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna keep this to myself um, until I know 100% that I'm gonna do it. Um, so yeah, only like my flatmate and my friends knew because I was like telling them all about the process and everything like that. So yeah, um, that well, that was the application. So through Camp America, they have a recruitment fair and I believe they have, um, this year they only had two from what I can um, account, well, at least in England. They had one in Ireland and I think they had one in Scotland that I can't be 100% sure. Um, and but they only had two and firstly I was kind of annoyed where the location of these only two recruitment fairs were and they were both in London and I read on their site they they do it in Manchester but I'm guessing because because of like Covid and everything like that they only just wanted to keep it to one place which I understand but it was just it would have been so much more simpler and much saved me so much more money if it was in Manchester as well but Hey ho, uh, <laughs> um, I, I understand, but at the same time, I was like, <laughs> I'm trying to save money for all this Camp America experience, but at the same time, I'm spending money to do this Camp America experience. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, so they were both in London, and I, I was, I did book to do the January one, but I just couldn't make it because it was just so short notice, and uh, I didn't give enough notice to my work, so, and it was like a work weekend that it was happening. So I couldn't do it, unfortunately. Um, but then there was another recruitment fair at March, and luckily um, it was a weekend that I was off. So um, I uh, got down there. Um, I was still very unsure if I was going to do this, especially since I hadn't really had any accounts through my own application. So um, I was just like, oh, I'll just go anyway, just to see how it goes and um, see how it feels and see if there's any camps that I like and there were a few camps that I searched that I did like and that would go be at the recruitment fair so I thought yeah I might as well just go and see if I can sell myself that sounds really weird <laughs> so I got to the recruitment fair um firstly I hated being in London <laughs> London is just a, such a busy place um I, I I try and avoid London like the plague um which is going to be very ironic because I'm going to New York <laughs> the most busiest place on earth and like I'm, I'm excited to go to New York but not to London the irony of my life um but um yeah um so but anyway back to the recruitment fair so I got to the recruitment fair was very nervous um and everyone can I just say everyone with who works at Camp America like the company is so nice it's so friendly and they were like talking to me and talking to me and helping me through my anxiety and I was just like ah thank you like they were just talking to this random girl that was just like so anxious and so thank you so much um and um so I went in and I went to the camp that was at my top that I researched and I spoke to them and I believe there was uh the person who's meant to be hiring people wasn't there that day because I think they got covid or something um so they weren't actually hiring people that day and they just took everyone's information down um, and I had a feeling that they wouldn't get back to me, which I was correct. Um, so I was a bit disheartened by that. And I went to different camps that I found that I saw that might fit what I wanted to do. But um, it just, yeah, it just didn't feel right with them. And they didn't, uh, I guess I didn't feel right to them either. And then I actually spoke to this one camp for... Um, um, this one camp caught my eye though and it was like in the corner of my eye it was actually when I was waiting for the first original camp that I really wanted to go to and I saw it and I was like oh well I'll go and check that out after I've waited in this line and spoken to the people at this camp and then after that so I went over to them and I talked to them and they were just so lovely um, and this camp that I was kind of like drawn to it was a day camp and they did various activities um, and so like the day camp would only work like five days a week, have evenings and weekends off. So it seemed like really nice and I was like, oh, I might come back to you guys. And they were like, oh, please do. We, um, they, I felt, I think they liked me and I liked them. But, um, but going around the recruitment fair, 
um, I came across this other camp and I started talking to them and I went into a very long conversation with them, it took up most of my time um, at this recruitment fair and they were on the verge of hiring me as well but the thing is um, they had to pause the hiring process because they because of my mental health issues um, and I had a long conversation with them and through this long conversation I was like oh god can I actually do this then because they don't think like they never said that they didn't think that I couldn't do it I never like they never said that but they were just like cautious because it, it was like a this camp was a very high pressure camp there were lots of pressure she had to be on the ball 24 7 um so i i was kind of like depleted by that point i was like oh god no one's gonna really hire me because of my mental health issues and then i went to speak to this other camp and i saw the original camp that i was so drawn to in the corner of my eye again it's always in the corner of my eye <laughs> um um and i was like you know what before i continue this um process with this other new camp that i started talking to um, I'm going to talk back to that camp that I was drawn to and I um, I got to talking with them and I was like you know what this actually might be the most appropriate camp for me because I get evenings off I have weekends off and that might fit into my mental health a bit better so then I have a breather each day and it's not so full and intense and when I spoke up about my mental health with them they were just so supportive they was like no no worries when we're so supportive and we can support you in any way you need. So I was like, I'm actually going to go with this camp. I'm going to work with them. And, you know, they hired me right on the spot. And I felt so nervous and so excited at the same time. I was like, I did not expect going into this recruitment fair thinking that I was going to be hired because I was just like, I don't think I'm going to do this anymore. I don't think it's for me. Um, but I came out and I was so excited and... Um, I think I might actually have a video of after the um, recruitment actually. Hiya, um, so I'm just out with Queen Elizabeth II Centre. Um, I just come out of the fair, the Camp America fair, and <laughs> I got placed, which is great. It was actually with a camp that I, it wasn't on my list. Um, I don't know why it wasn't on my list, but I'll have to look back and see why. But. Um, yeah, I, it was a very, it was a very um, overwhelming experience, um, and uh, like I am so scared, but I'm also very excited, um, and I'm also very nervous. Like there's some stuff financially that I need to work out um, because I chose a camp that's going to be probably a bit longer than what I wanted, um, but I have to just work it out because this is something that I really want to do, and the camp sounds really good, and I feel like this is going to be. A great opportunity and I just even I'm scared I feel like this is something that I need to do um so I'm, I'm gonna make it work I'm gonna make it work and dad <laughs> if you'll see if, if you're seeing this after I've done it I'm sorry that I didn't tell you <laughs> um yeah um but I'm just gonna I've got a few hours to kill now because I don't think I train So yeah, I was officially going to camp um, in America and um, by this point, as you can probably tell in that video, I still hadn't told my dad. Um, I was keeping it very low key. I just wanted to get most of this done at some point. I wanted to get the visa done. I wanted to get like flights done. I wanted to get everything done. I wanted everything to be absolutely permanent before I told him. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, um, the next stage was my visa process. And so um, I'm about to have a one-to-one -one meeting, well, Skype meeting with um, one of the um, heads of the camp that I'm going to. Um, I'm really nervous. Um, I kind of just had a bad day today. <laughs> well, I didn't have a bad day. I had a bad moment and it just improved over time. So it was a bad moment that I had today and little things have improved it so no negativity just really tired now because I've just done a lot today um but I'm really 
um, looking forward to this meeting. I've got some questions for her that I just need clarification on. And um, hopefully she can just get me all pumped up for it again. Because I was really pumped up last week and then I had work all weekend. And now I'm just freaking exhausted. So... <laughs> Uh, so with the visa process, I had to wait for my DS 2019. Is that what it's called? Well, I had to wait for my DS form. I know it starts with DS. Uh, I had to wait for that before I booked my visa appointment and eventually it came and I booked it, booked it, my original appointment for the visa appointment at the ambassador in London. Going to London again. <laughs> um, and I booked, I booked the um, original slot um, for my visa appointment on the 7th of April and um, I, I actually booked a um, coach fare because I was going to get a coach into London and then get a train back home which I can tell you right now was probably like the worst decision I ever made but at the time I was like oh this might be cheaper and I could save a bit of, a bit of money um, so I did that and then <laughs> You never guess what happened. Hey there. Um, as you can probably tell by the sound of my voice, I am ill. Um, I um, I wasn't so sure I had it because um, um, I I tested um, for COVID on Monday twice, and it both pretty much came out negative. So I thought I was just having the cold. Um, but I tested this morning and it came out positive. So, um, which is a bit of a annoyance right now because not only am I missing work now, um, cause I said it was probably best I didn't go in cause I'm around a lot of vulnerable people. Um, but, um, also I have my appoint my visa appointment for tomorrow. Um, but I clearly can't go now because I don't want to infect anyone else. So, God, I must sound like deaf right now. Um, but, um, yeah, so, and I was a bit too late because I, I tested in the morning at around 11 o'clock. And you can only reschedule before the next day, before 12 o'clock. And I just missed it. Um, but I called Camp America and they said it's fine just miss it and then it should revert back and say that you've missed an appointment and then you can reschedule through that so yeah um i managed to reschedule my train though um so we're saving money on that but i um i i was already saving money anyway because um i was going to get the coach out to london to the ambassador and everything like that and that was 18 19 pounds and then I was going to get a train back because it's a bit of a distance to go because it's, if when you're on coach, it takes like four or five hours and I would have to get the coach at um, one o'clock in the morning and get there for six o'clock in the morning. So I'll be hanging about for a while. And then um, I decided to just get the train back and that's only like two hours. So I managed to reschedule the train, which was good because that was the most expensive part. But I wasn't able to reschedule the coach. So, but that's not the end of the world. It's only £19. So, um, as long as I'm being safe and, you know, making sure I don't try and infect anyone else, that's the um, best thing I can do right now. Um, my flatmate has it as well, but she had it before me and she's slowly recovering now. Um, like, it came up her test recently. Um, she got it Friday and now it's Wednesday and um, she tested this morning and it didn't like it sort of came out negative but it was a, like a faint line on the t-section so she's pretty much recovering right now she's pretty much recovered right now um, I'm dying <laughs> because not only um, am I on um, not only do I have COVID I am also on my time of the month, so I'm like the the god and goddess. The universe is just really testing me right now. Um, but um, yeah, I can't go to work this week. I'm not sure about next week. I'm hoping to go back to work next week because I really need the money. <laughs> um, and also, um, my flatmate giving me hope 
it's given me hope that since she's recovered quite quickly, I, I should be all right as well. And I've had both of my um, jet vaccinations, so yeah, um, but we shall see. Until then, I am pretty much in my bed. Um, I'm actually going to have a shower in a bit, but um, I am pretty much now in my bed. Um, I'm not really able to eat much at the moment because um, when I do eat, I'm not really able to keep it down or I just feel even more sick. Um, and um, I just got a banging headache. Um, I got a sore throat, but I'm not really coughing. Um, I My taste and smell isn't that bad. So um, I, I don't really have it as bad as probably other people have had it. But I just, uh, it, it's just like mucked everything up at the end of the day. It's not the end of the world. I, just, I can just reschedule my visa appointment. And I've managed to reschedule my train ticket as well. Um, I've rescheduled it for the 20th, but I might reschedule it to the actual day that I'm going to have my visa appointment. So we shall see. Um, until then, um, I'm just going to rest um, and sleep because sleep is my best friend right now <laughs> so yeah from that little clip you saw i got covid um and i couldn't make it to my visa appointment because of that so um i had to re um schedule it um and uh luckily i managed to get it for the week after um and my covid was cleared by that point so um so yeah, I managed to go down there for the 14th or, it was between the 14th or the 20th of April, I met, I went down there and um, yeah, it was, it was an experience because <laughs> firstly I got, I still went to do a coach, which I think I got another video of. Hey there, so um, today is the, oh god, sorry, this needs, oh, the sniffles. Um, that was, that's not to do with COVID, um, it's to do with my hay fever and my asthma. But anyway, today is the 14th of April. Um, it's been a week since I was meant to go to the ambassador appointment. It was last Thursday, so it's Thursday. <laughs> um, but I recovered from COVID um, and I tested negative for, um, for the last five days, I think now. Um, yeah, so I'm heading to London today because I just really want to get this um, ambassador appointment done right now. Um, and I'm just really like panicking about it now because I accidentally on one of my forms I'm, I'm putting the date 2020, um, 2020, like the year 2020, it's meant to be 2022. I tried to do the two at the end. Hopefully they won't like jump on me about that. Um, but yeah, right now it is one o'clock in the morning. Um, I booked a coach. Uh, the only problem is, not 100% 100% sure where it stops. Um, I'm pretty sure it's at the train station. And I found two like mark posts that says National Express. Oh, sorry, text Google. Uh, but um, um, but the thing is, they're on opposite ends. On, on opposite roads so I don't know which one I'm supposed to go on so hopefully when they turn up if they turn up because I just no one really knows like I asked people at the train station hey it's the National Express company and they're like I don't know we don't we don't we only operate with trains we operate with coaches so I was like great um so that's a great start um so hopefully it turns up soon it's meant to get here for 125 so I am here a bit early anyway um, I was running a bit late as well because um, um, I I was meant to get up at 11.30 and just sort of get ready and go um, but I woke up a bit delayed because I, I had a bit of a nap, I had a cat nap uh, so yeah um, woke up a bit delayed and then I just got into the taxi like five seven minutes late the taxi driver was not happy with me uh, but um, yeah so I'm just swinging about now I double checked all the forms that I've got, um, hopefully everything's okay um, and hopefully that date thing is okay as well. I literally, I, I didn't even think about it. I think my brain's still like high, high, high wired to 2020 because that's when everything went down. Um, so my brain's still in 2020, still hasn't processed 2020. Um, 
but yeah, um, so just waiting around for the coach now. I thought I would be I would be the only one around here, but there's a couple of people around, so that makes me feel a bit more safer. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just gonna leave it there because I am eternally stressing about this coach, and I'm just gonna like have an equal eye now. <laughs> I can tell you firsthand though this coach experience that I decided to do to try and save money was the worst decision I ever made. Um, the coat, yeah, it just like I couldn't fall asleep on there at all. And when I did, my neck was just screaming at me. And then I was next, I wasn't even next to the window. <laughs> so someone else was sitting right next to me. And um, at one point, when the coach stopped for a break, um, they needed to get up and get food and I was in the midst of like trying to fall asleep and I was like oh god um, so yeah I did like I know that sounds like very whiny of me but I was just like it was not a pleasant experience I do not recommend getting a coach to London from York ever again because uh, it's just no um, and when I even got to uh, London it was like six o'clock in the morning and I was literally so out of it I was just like I, I, I was I'm surprised I kept on walking. Um, I, I was literally about to collapse to the ground out of exhaustion. Um, but, and I even, to try and wake me up, I had like two McDonald's breakfasts to try and like wake me up a bit more because I was just that out of it. And I actually went to prep for about an hour or so and I nearly fell asleep in there. And I, like, there was like this like person who was on the same table, like long table as me, who was like giving me like, are you okay girl? <laughs> Um, so yeah, anyone doing Camp America, if you fit, if, like if you're closer to London, a coach is a good idea, but if you're further out from London, do not get a coach because it's just the worst experience ever, I do not recommend. Um, but anyway, I went to get my visa, went to my visa appointment, um, and the ambassador is just the most intimidating place that I have ever been to. I felt like I was just like a wanted criminal and I, ha I hadn't even done anything. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god. Like, there was people with guns there. It was just like, oh my god. <laughs> and then that was kind of like my first taste of what I will be seeing in America. Um, so yeah, I think I have another video of my um, amb ambassador appointment. Hi there. So um, the ambassador is just literally across the street. I am shattered. Uh, like the coach here was just awful. I um, there was it was the, I didn't think the the coach was going to be crowded, but it was. And I was sitting next to someone, and they were sitting next to the window, so they had to get me up at one point because they, um, we stopped for like a rest break or like to get food, and they had to wake me up when I was napping. I was like, oh for God's sake, um, which you know, not it's not really their fault. They need to get something to eat. But it's just like, yeah, it was just not the best experience. Um, but I got here at about six o'clock in the morning and then I found the nearest McDonald's and had a McDonald's breakfast. Um, that woke me up a little bit and then I went to prayer. Well, I got on the tube to get close to the ambassador uh, and then I got the kit. Then I went to prayer. I was literally falling asleep nearly there. Oh, I was just so tired. Um, but yeah, I've slightly woken up now. Um, I've had a bit of a walk around. I found the ambassador. I'm just having five minutes to myself now because I was in um, Wake Rose Cafe for a bit. Um, I'm just having five minutes to myself. Just check all the documents that I have them. Again, like the amount of times I've checked all my documents to check that I have them all is insane. But um, yeah, um, I'm just really nervous, especially about that one document that I signed the year wrong i'm hoping that they won't make a big deal of it but i just like i'm just like, internally panicking and i don't think it helps that i have i've had literally no sleep <laughs> um so i'm looking forward to going home tonight and just going back to bed um yeah so um, um yeah i don't know what else to say i'm just gonna check over my documents and then i'm gonna go to the ambassador so fingers crossed i have everything again i've checked it like 500 times now <laughs> I did it! <laughs> um, I, I, I'm kind of like in shock right now because um, they approved my visa after I had the interview. Um, and it, honestly, the interview in that 
didn't go the way I thought it was gonna go. I thought I was gonna be in like a white room with one person sat at a table and I had to sit there and I thought the interview would go like that. But no, it was just kind of like a, um, like being at a bank or something. It was just like, it was really weird. Um, just not what I, it was, it was, actually, I don't know if it was better or not. I think it just made me more nervous because I just didn't, didn't know what to expect. Uh, but um, yeah. Uh, Oh, I'm just I, I'm just seeing this like apartment complex just opposite from the embassy, and it has like a swimming pool with like it's like a see-through swimming pool, uh, uh, a swimming pool, uh, swimming pool, and like you can see it. I'll, I'll have to like take a photo and put, put it on the screen for you, but it's so weird. I just, I, and I just noticed that. But anyway, um, um, yeah. So um, I had the, the interview, and I. I was surprised that I got approved right away and I was like well, I w it's good that I got approved right away I didn't like I haven't done anything wrong to not get approved right away but I, I didn't know they were going to tell me right there and then I was approved so I I was happy um and they said I'll, I'll get the visa along with my passport in a week or so so that's good um uh, I'm just like I'm appreciating the building now because when I first got here it was so intimidating but now I'm appreciating the beauty of the US ambassador. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just, I'm in shock. And I think the moment she said my visa has been approved, I think everything just sort of exploded in my head. Because um, I was nervous getting here and I was nervous about like the interview and what they would ask me and everything like that or what would happen because I wasn't quite so sure what would go down. Um, because of that, I wasn't like fully, um, I wasn't fully um, understanding the fact that I was going to America. Like it hadn't settled in that I was going to America just because there was this like visa thing, um, situation going down and there's something else going down as well that I'll tell you later that I need to get sorted before I go. Um, but yeah, um, I, yeah, it was just, um, I'm going to America. <laughs> I can't believe it. Like, I'm in total shock. Uh, I didn't actually think I would get this far. Um, I think my nerve, I was so worried about my anxiety just taking over and be like, yeah, I can't do this. Um, but um, my, it's what my boss said to me the other day, I got to stop doubting myself. And when I was like walking up to the ambassador, I was like, oh my God, I can't do this, I can't do this. Um, I was like to myself, I went to I went to Amsterdam on my own. If I can do that, I can do anything. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I just someone said to me the other day as well. You're almost thirty, Rose. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> and firstly, thank you for freaking me the hell out because I like to just think of myself as just 26 nowhere near 30 and as soon as that person said I was, I'm nearly 30 I was just like oh my god I am <laughs> but um yeah um I don't like I I think in these kind of situations though where I'm like faced doing these things especially since I've been doing it all by myself uh like I've had a little bit of help from Camp America and that kind of stuff but um I largely been doing it on my own. I got to London for the fruit affair on my own. I got to London today on my own. Um, obviously with a coach and train. Um, and yeah, I, but I don't think, I don't think of myself as an adult though. I think of myself as still like a child that doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> and I clearly don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm just winging it. Um, so, but I think in these sort of, sort of I think it's just settling in that I'm an adult. I'm going to America for four months, and I'm going to be working with kids, um, which I'm both looking forward to, and I'm also like scared about because yes, I've done volunteering with kids, but I don't know if I'm necessarily good at teaching them or like organising them. Like everyone said, I would be great, and a few times I have done it with volunteering, and I have been all right. But I think it's also Another reason why I want to do a Camp America 
is because of my confidence. I, I'm not very great with interacting with new people. I'm not very great. It, like I like I am, but I'm not. Like I'm not very confident in what I do sometimes. And I just, that's why I feel like I always have to push myself to do new things so I can gain that confidence and stop, as that, as my boss said to me the other day, stop doubting myself. Um, Cause I can do it. Um, I can do things. Um, I just can't let my anxiety win all the time. Um, so yeah, um, I've just been rambling on for the last five minutes. Um, I think I've got, I've still got a while until I have to catch my train. But I might just head to um, King's Cross, and London's King's Cross anyway, so then I can just like prepare in that and just stop off at a cafe somewhere. Or I might just stop off at a cafe around here and then just charge my phone for a bit. I don't know, the world is my oyster for the next two hours. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> I have nothing more to say. Um, but yeah, uh, my visa's been approved. Ah. So yeah, my visa was accepted, um, which was amazing. Um, it was accepted right on the spot. I was like, yes, I'm going to America. Um, and yeah, it, it was just, it was, it was a surreal moment for me because I was just like, I can't believe I'm going to America. Um, this is just like definite. And I, um, luckily my visa getting back to me wasn't too bad. Um, I had to go to Manchester to collect my, uh, my passport and my visa, which worked well because I needed to do, I, needed, I wanted to go to a Pacific um, shop in Manchester as well. So it all kind of like worked out in the end. Um, and I did a bit of shopping in Manchester as well. So that was nice. Um, and it was my first time going to Manchester as well. So it was my first Manchester experience. Um, so yeah, um, that's the visa process. And then the next part was like the flights. Um, so the day I set off is the 8th of June, which is already passed in your time. Um, and I set off at like eight, no, not eight. I set off at 9.20 in the morning, which means I have to get there for like 5.30, 6 o'clock. And I'm just like, oh. God. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, and then I booked, like I said previously, I booked a DIY flight return home. And this basically means that I can um, book a flight through Camp America at any point, um, depending on what when I wanna go home. Um, and um, I had to pay a bit towards this. And they have several options of what airports you can fly from. Uh, so um, the so the cheapest one was just only flying from um, New York and then the second cheapest flight one was uh, Northeast cities and then it just got more expensive. The ultimate one was I think 279 pound and it's like the ultimate one that like you can get a flight from anywhere in America. Uh, I went for the Northeast cities, the second cheapest one because wasn't so sure what I was going to do and also um, the flight would be shorter from the north east part because um, from like New York area the flight to back to the UK is about six hours so it would have been cheap it would have been less I would be saving time if I got it from that area so um, and if I wanted to do some traveling maybe I can start from the other side of the country and then work my way back towards New York like I don't know I don't know what the plan is so I just went for that one <laughs> Um, and also with the northeast cities I have more options like Philadelphia so yeah um, I don't have to be so set in New York it could be anywhere within the northeast um, so that was the plan and I also by the 30 day grace period I have to come back by the 18th of September so um, yeah <laughs> so other things that I need to do um, before I had to before I fly out to America or have flown out to America was a fit to fly test so that was basically taking a COVID test but it has to be observed by people um, that's going to be over a zoom call so that's going to be very interesting um, and then there is insurance that I need to get um, um, which I got my dad um, helps me get um, which he now knows by the way <laughs> Uh, which is on the f uh, fourth thing on this list as well. Um, I had to sort out my medication as well. 
um, I got four months prescription. I tried to get five, but my, my doctors were just like, we don't give five. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I'll have to deal with four, which is, it, it does, it will be enough. But at the same time, I kind of wanted more just in case I wanted to travel out somewhere after America. But um, I guess it, like, we'll just see what happens. Um, they've given me like uh, repeat prescription um, letters that, I can show a doctor um, wherever I am in the world to get me my medication but um, and hopefully I won't be in America by that point still so you know um, you know you get what you're given um, and then obviously with the insurance I, to um, I told my dad my dad was um, really uh, he wasn't shocked because I, uh, I brought it up this with, with him before um, but he was he was really supportive like he he um, I think yeah he was really supportive I think he was a bit like oh god she's gotten all of this done because <laughs> I told him about getting my visa done and everything like that um, and I think in a way he's a bit worried but it's more of like a parental worry like oh god she's going off through America <laughs> like uh, the gun central place um, but I think he's pleased for me and I think he he he's supportive and everything like that so that's good uh, it, I thought I was expecting like the worst <laughs> but to give my dad credit he was really supportive and um, he helped me get a medical insurance um, with Camp America you do get medical insurance but I've been told di different things so I've been told by someone that your medical insurance covers everything apart from your pre-existing pre conditions that's what I've been told by other people, but I've heard from others that it does cover your pre-existing condition. So I was just like, I have no idea anymore. Um, so I just got an insurance just in case, because uh, this is America. Um, so overall, there are still a few bits I need to do, like I am dreading packing. Um, I got this big suitcase. Um, in the next video, I will be talking about like my packing and the shopping and everything like that. Because uh, there is a bit of a story with my suitcase as well, so look forward to hearing about that. Um, and then I'm also going back to my hometown for a few days um, before I get get my flight to America. It just it just works out easier because my dad lives like a few hours away, like two hours away from London, and he said he will give me a lift. So um, <laughs> that's another part I'm dreading because I don't really like my hometown. <laughs> But um, yeah, um, I don't really know what else to say. Um, the next video, like I said, will be a shopping slash um, packing slash luggage video. So you'll get to see all that I've bought or most of what I've bought anyway. And um, um, yeah, I can't believe this is happening. Um, I'm still in disbelief and I will be in disbelief for the rest of the week. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, like I like to remind you, I'm technically in America right now, so I have no idea what's going on right now as this video is going up, but I look forward to experiencing it all. But uh, the next video will be out hopefully next week, but until then I'll see you guys later. Bye.